everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video i'm going to show you how to thicken your shampoo this is one of the most frequently asked questions by formulators because uh, a lot of the thickeners on the market are not good for thickening your shampoo so if you have issue thickening your shampoo this is a video you want to watch to the end so stay tuned and watch every bit of this video once and for all to know how to thicken your shampoo the most popular thickener on the market we use to thicken our shampoo are goa gum by now you should know about goa gum is a is a regular goa gum and as you all know it's white just like this then we have our cationic goa gum which is yellow in color light yellow right then thirdly hydroethyl cellulose hydroethyl cellulose the the brand that we use to take in you can use to take in your shampoo is the treated one there are two types of hydroethyl cellulose the white one and the other one that looks more like a xanthan gum um i open so that look more like xanthan gum that is not what you want you want hydroethyl cellulose the treated one available at pureblendnaturals.com so this is one thing uh, if you're a formulator this is one ingredient that you should get now how do you take in your shampoo uh, here i want to show you what i've done before and i'm going to uh, make three shampoos here so you know exactly how to take in your shampoo this is a shampoo i made with regular goa gum and the, uh, the thickness is not exactly what you want in a shampoo okay the thickness is okay, it's still a bit thick, okay, but it's still runny. Even when you had salt at 1% to adjust the viscosity, right, it will still be runny and it may still be lumpy, okay. As you see, it's not the best to make shampoo. So, our first experiment with regular guar gum is zero, so you don't want to use that too. Uh, make your shampoo. The second gum, which is cationic goa gum, a very, very expensive uh, cosmetic ingredient, um, is a bit costly for 57 grams, it's $9.50 here at uh, one of our supplier. But it's coming soon to pureblendnatural.com where you'll be able to see it uh, at affordable price. Okay, that's what I know. It's coming soon to pureblend natural. Uh, the cationic goa gum at a very affordable rate this is too expensive if you are to make a uh, shampoo and you have to buy 57 gram for 9.50 dollar that is not that is not cost effective but oh, for now to be able to make your shampoo you need cationic goa gum okay um out of the three experiments i made cationic goa gum is the best but i'll set it aside let's go with my last thickener this thickener, like I said before, is the hydroethyl cellulose. The treated one is the best grade for cosmetics, okay? So make sure you go to pureblendnatural.com. You can find it at a very good price. For, I think, uh, for 100 gram, I'm not sure, is like $16. So you can compare that with uh, when you have to buy a gum for 57 gram or almost ten dollars so it doesn't make sense so hydroethyl cellulose 2 is something you can make sure you go for the treated one which i highly recommend you go to pure blend naturals to get it um so i use that to make a shampoo i actually use it to make uh, several shampoo for my clients and they are okay with this viscosity okay um the the interesting it the interesting thing about hydroethyl cellulose is that it's going to thicken your shampoo okay if you use surfactant right it's also going to boost the foam okay it's different uh, when you use it to make um when you use it to make a uh, lye lye liquid soap if you use a uh, hydroethyl cellulose to make lye liquid soap it may reduce the the foam but when you use it to make regular foam well just allow it to settle down okay all the way and make sure you do a lot of blending in the next 24 to 48 hours your shampoo is going to thicken well okay and it's going to really be more ready and this i did this uh, around two hours ago so it really needs at least 24 to 48 hours for the viscosity to increase so you want to consider using hydroethyl cellulose okay what are cationic gum and this is what it gives 
as you can see it's more viscous with this you don't need any uh, crotic as you see it's more together right and now you ask me how do i make it exactly right i'm going to as you can see cationic did the best job looking at all the three right cationic did the best job okay i mean from from my own point of view cationic did the best job followed by hex okay so this is cationic here on the left and this is x it's still x is going to do amazing job let's just give it 20 at least minimum of 24 hours you're going to see some amazing thing from hex and this is cationic let's go for the regular regular did not do that much regular guagum did not do that much okay for us to fully evaluate it we still need to uh give it 24 hours though but still not bad what i use is that i had it uh, salt okay i had a dead sea mineral salt and you can also use table salt to adjust the viscosity to get to where we are now and also i make sure okay i adjust the ph so i'm going to show you the best way to use your gum to make shampoo so let's quickly go with one of these so i'm going to show you now with cationic gum. so how to make um i'm still going to do an extensive video but i'll rush this through to pass this through quickly so we're using cationic gua gum so get your get your measuring scale ready and let's do this quickly what you're going to do the first thing you want to do is to take a little bowl i mean a little measuring container you're going to measure five gram of glycerin our glycerin, we usually get our glycerin from Pure Blend Natural because they have the best grade for cosmetics, okay? If you want the best grade for cosmetics, make sure you go for the USP version at uh, pureblendnatural.com. Very cost effective also, so you'll be able to do well. So let's get a clean. So what you want to do is measure five, five gram. We're going to make 100 gram of this. Five gram of vegetable glycerin. Then you're going to measure one gram. You're going to use your cationi gua gum at one gram. I tried at 0.5%, but no, it didn't do well. So make sure you use it at one gram. So let me zoom my camera in. One gram of cationi gua gum. Add it to this is a very expensive ingredient, so you have to be careful how you use it. One gram of cationic gua gum mixed with five gram of glycerin. Then you're going to mix that together and set it aside. As you know, cationic gua gum is more, uh, will give more structure to your shampoo and will give more hold but at a cost, okay, it's quite expensive. So set that aside, measure your distilled water. I'm using 77 gram. Um, for my distilled water, I'm going to use 78 gram of distilled water. So measure 78 gram of distilled water. Okay, so don't forget we are using, we are making a shampoo with goa, cationic goa gum. Okay. Measure that, then we're going to, I'm using cocoa glucoside and my surfactant of choice. So we're going to use cocoa glucoside at 15 gram. So add 15 gram of cocoa glucoside to your distilled water. Uh, in my upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to blend surfactant. You need that to be able to make a great shampoo. So I'm going to show you the basic of surfactant blending. So 
so that is your fourth step then we're going to add our preservative I always uh, recommend this preservative to use by pureblendnatural.com. It is a workhorse for you when you are working with simple surfactant like cocoa glucoside, um, coca, midopropyl betaine, or decay glucoside, any of those simple surfactants. Any surfactant that's not ethoxylated will work with this preservative. This is the best preservative for your shampoo. So uh, look in the description box below for where you get to get it. It's available at pureblendnatural.com if you are based in Canada. So what we will do is that we're going to mix, mix your water and surfactant. Don't worry, it's going to form. There's nothing you can do about that. People will tell you do not blend it too much. You know, don't waste your time. Just uh, professional formulation. We store this in the tank, in the curing tank to calm down the foam. So it's not something to worry about. So you want to add your preservative to that. I use a EUXYL P9010 at 1%. So when you don't add in that, we are going to mix it. Mix it well, then you make sure you adjust the pH. Before you had your gum and glycerin blend, make sure you adjust the pH. We're going to adjust the pH. So basically what I do is uh, I'm going to adjust with lactic acid. So we're going to add four drops of lactic acid to that. Then we're going to mix and test the pH. A lot of you will make, I don't know, um, a lot of people are teaching you wrong stuff online. So be careful where you learn from. Uh, if you're learning from people with no cosmetic uh, chemistry background or training, you're going to get really messed up. So make sure you, you can learn from me, head over to stablecosmeticformulas.com. That's where I teach my students. So you're going to check that pH. I always recommend a pH meter, so make sure you use a pH meter to check it. You want your pH, okay, to, if you're using cationic, cationic will work well um, for with any pH below five. So this pH is still a bit on the high side, so we're going to add one drop of lactic acid. We are making 100 gram of this. So we're going to add one drop of lactic acid, 88%. Okay, I'm using lactic acid, 88%. I added two drops, so I hope it won't affect it too much. So mix it. We're going to check it. You're asking me why am I dipping it? Because this is just a test formulation. If I'm doing a professional formulation, I shouldn't be dipping my pH meter into everything. I just have to take a little bit at a time and check it. Uh, because I'm just using this to show you. Make sure your pH fall below 6, okay? To make it cationic below 5.5 will do well for you. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to stop here so uh, we don't waste too much time. Just make sure your pH drops below 6 well. So this is 5.7 I'm going to, if you want to make it cationic, make sure your pH drops below 5. Something around 5.5 is okay. But if you don't worry too much, just make sure it drops below 6. Okay. Then after checking that, we have adjusted our pH to fall below 6, right? Then you're going to add your, your gum to that your gum and glycerin blend, and this you're going to mix them together. Then you're going to see how, how the thickness improves now. Now, if your pH is too high, even if the cationic gua gum will not work. Okay, so keep that in mind. Don't worry, you need to blend your work properly. Don't listen to people that tell you to blend gently, no. Blend it as much as you can. I'm using an an emulsion blender to blend it, but it's just that you're going to give it some time, okay, to take to 
cool calm down so blend it with an emotion blender now after blending with your emotion blender you need to give it time okay <coughs> you need to give it time at least one to two hours is what you need to let it thicken properly so after one to two hours you should get what i have here okay so this is still full of uh, bubbles that's fine there's nothing bad in that okay we're going to allow this to settle down after two hours you're going to get what i have here i'm going to get this very nicely viscous there's nothing else i added to the to this cationic one and this is what you're going to get and this is okay for shampoo as you see it's thick enough okay to appeal to your customer this is a shampoo okay it looks a lot more like a shampoo gel isn't it because i'm doing a cold processed shampoo if i have to use um an emulsifier you understand or a cationic surfactants and stuff like that then it's going to be more um it's going to be whitish right so but because it's a cold process one just to show you this is exactly what your shampoo will look like if you use cationic goa gum okay now if you cannot be bothered if you want to cut your cost uh, you can either go with regular goa gum which you have here i'm still going to make a video on this right but it may be lumpy which is the issue with regular goa gum it's going to be lumpy in the long run which you don't want for your customer right so i don't recommend that another thing that works well for for horse ear like i showed you before is the hex okay x gel work well in the shampoo even right now it's going to take you your hex gel it will take at least 24 to 48 hours okay for it to fully okay to fully hydrate so when you make it with hex just have to wait you only um all you need is patient okay for your shampoo to be really you know viscous to be to be able to have strong viscosity but if you don't have the time you can just you know, set all that aside just spend more money on your ingredient and go for cationic goa gum okay like i said before cationic goa gum is very expensive but it's coming at, at a more affordable price to pure blend natural I'm not sure when but you will you would be, you will be notified then okay okay so that's about it for this video if you have any questions so how do i thicken my gum if i'm to round it up for you what you need is a cationic goa gum oh, my shampoo jar how do i take in my shampoo you need a cationic uh, goa gum add it to glycerin so if you're making 100 gram make sure you add one gram of cationic goa gum to five gram of vegetable glycerin usp version available at pureblendnatural.com mix it very well you're going to add your surfactant and water to get them preservative remember i always recommend go for eu xy health pe9010 available at pure natural so add it with water and uh, distilled and your surfactant for this one i use cocoa glucoside so look in the description box below for link to i put the recipe though on the screen so i mean not necessarily put in the description box below this is to encourage you to watch this video so look watch the video very well you will see the, the the amount that i use if you want to rewind again okay I, I i remember mentioning it to you and that's about it for this video this is how you take in your shampoo and this is the shampoo you have when you use cation in guagum okay if you have more time on your hand give it 24 to 48 hours you can use x okay available at pure blend naturals to make your shampoo to take in your shampoo okay this is gel shampoo for hex it did a good job you just need 24 to 48 hours for it to fully hydrate for hydrated cellulose powder all you need is the waiting period 
for it to fully hydrate and give you the and give your shampoo or even your gel the old that it's needed and the viscosity that it's needed i uh, hope you enjoyed this video i hope this video has sorted out any issue you might have with uh, working with quarter uh, with guar gum if you've been working with guar gum before and it's uh, forming lumps okay you ask me why is it forming lumps because it's cationic it's not cationic so do not use regular guar gum for shampoo okay make sure you go for cationic guar gum if you have to make shampoo okay go for cationic guar gum for your shampoo uh, thank you so much for watching everyone if you want to improve your formulation skill this is your channel for you so click that subscribe button and the notification icon to be notified when i upload new videos if you have any question at all about making shampoo about thickening your shampoo about building viscosity uh, drop it also in the comment box below you can also build the viscosity of your shampoo by adding one percent of salt you can you can either choose dead sea mineral salts available uh, the cosmetic grade available at pureblendnatural.com dead sea mineral salt you can also add that at one percent to Im further improve the viscosity of your shampoo so thank you for watching everyone i'll see you in, uh, in my next video